more than a dozen people still trapped on the rubble of a collapsed skyscraper in Lagos. Emergency responders say six people dead and four currently in hospital. We will be talking to the spiritual leader and founder of One Love Family, Sadhguru Maharaji, this morning about the state of Nigeria. We will also take a look at the major stories on the front pages of the dailies. They're dominated by the collapse of the 21-story building in Lagos. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. A Tuesday morning, the first, official first day of November, is it? Second day Second. of November. Oh. <laughs> and it's the first Tuesday, don't worry, I know how it Tuesday feels. first Tuesday November, <laughs> my bad. You know, I've, I've been under, under the weather. I know. Anyway, good morning, thanks for joining us. I am Osaogi Ogbonwan. And I am Messi Bopo. As always, of course, we start with the major stories uh, making headlines across Nigeria today. One of them that you can't miss, um, of course, is the collapse of the 21-story building here in Lagos around uh, the Ikoi, um, 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 I think, Gerard area. Yeah, Gerard uh, Ikoi area. in Lagos. Um, shocking, very, very shocking uh, news uh, yesterday. And, of course, um, from the live feed that we got and from our correspondent who was also on ground yesterday, it was a very, 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 very painful uh, situation. Um, sadly, there's different angles that we, of course, would love to talk about and hope that there's more people rescued from the report. It says about six people have been confirmed uh, to have been victims and uh, to have died. Yeah, so um, some, some, some quarters are reporting four. Others are saying four rescued, four dead. Yeah. And uh, I still think because uh, that's a, a very, very... Um, you know, huge one. So it's going to take a lot of time. So I'm sure that as we pr proceed in the course of the day, we'll definitely see how the figures rolling and all of that. But you have the figures not really tallying yeah. uh, from different quarters. And, uh, you know, uh, another unfortunate incident is the fact that it's really, really sad. Now, I don't know if you actually seen the report. Uh, there's a report saying that uh, you know, the Lagos uh, agency is saying, oh, yes, approval was given for the construction. Uh, approval was given for 15 story, you know, to be erected. Yeah, and then and we then have 21 story. 21. But the problem, you know, the question now is the Lagos uh, Building Control Agency is vested with that responsibility of monitoring and enforcing building control regulations. So how... Because it feels like, okay, yes, we approve 15 for you and you have 21. I'm thinking that someone failed at your job because if uh, you had the team monitoring and ensuring that, you know, they are building up to, you know, um, expectation, what is expected of them, we wouldn't have all of this. So now you're saying, well, oh, we give them approval for 15 and then they have 21 story. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure that, so, so what, what I expect is, you know, in, in a sane society, and I expect that Lagos will be able to bring out some sanity in itself in order to investigate this properly. I hope that they will be able to, um, you know, bring out the truth and let us know if they truly approved just 15 and they pushed all the way to 17 or to 21. That's one. And if they went ahead to seek approval for 21 later on, and it was granted because now everyone is going to try and act innocent like, oh, we only approve 15. But, mm. you know, we would like to know if they also went ahead to seek, you know, further approval to push for a 21-story building and the Lagos State government granted that approval. I remember that there's also a letter that shows the structural consultants pulling out sometime in February 2020 um, saying that they no longer wanted to be associated with it. They probably had seen some things that weren't, um, you know, proper and they decided instead of them to be, you know, caught in the, in the mess, they would rather pull out. So there's a lot of questions to be asked. I remember also sometime last year the Lagos State government did stop construction in that building um, but I, according to that, um, it says it's really because of the building approval and some other things, not necessarily because of the structure. Um, if they eventually continued after it was suspended, um, it's, these questions need to be asked. Lives have been lost, mm. you know, whether VIPs or laborers, it doesn't matter, they are Nigerian lives that have been lost. Mm. Um, some of the other questions that need to be asked is really, and it's something that I believe that we need to question more now, if these places where these skyscrapers are be being built are really meant to be for skyscrapers or not. And the reason I'm asking is, yesterday I was in Ikoi for about two hours, stuck in traffic because of, you know, this thing. I, the the um, commissioner of police had walked past because he also couldn't pass. The whole of the place was blocked. He couldn't pass. He had to find his way and walk past, um, you know, all the traffic to get to the scene of the incident. Um, there wasn't any way in those one hour 
30 minutes to two hours that I was there, that I, there was no rescue vehicle that could pass at that time. There was nothing. There was zero. Not even a little tractor could pass anywhere to get to that incident. And, and that's one of the things that I'm talking about. Here because someone put out a very, very long thread on, on social media about it. That it took about three hours before there was any actual rescue truck or rescue vehicle. And, and like you have rightly mentioned, this should not just be another case. Because first of all, this is not the first time we're having buildings collapse in Lagos. I mean, we've had, you know, series of cases. That of the uh, TB Joshua, you know, yeah. uh, building that collapsed. You want to go on from 2016 or 2014. The, the, you know, you have series of all of this building that has actually gone down. But, you know, it brings me back to bodies. Because we do not live in a society where there's no law. I mean, we're governed by law and we have bodies and that's why we have the government and so the question now would also be the Lagos State Physical Planning Permit Authority you are asking who should that place be approved in the first instance for such uh, you know structure to be erected so the question is who gave the permit yeah. already you also have the other body saying oh we approve 15 it therefore shows that you know there's a lot that we just we don't pay attention to things i'm sure that before any structure is being erected professionals will tell you that you know some environmental impact assessment should be carried out and this is actually given in every sane and you know civil society it is really quite uh, very sad it's saddening to me because i know that a lot of people who left your houses you know went out to ek a living and you know and that's the end of them. Do you do you know how many persons that are trapped in that particular space as we speak right now? It could be anyone, and we cannot constantly just you know act randomly uh, like we don't care about the lives yeah. of people. So I'm hoping that this also would not just be another uh, collapse building, and then we're not doing anything because for every time we have a structure collapse, we're thinking that people should you know pay for it. Someone should be accountable. People should you know be apprehended. Someone should be arrested. Uh, something should go on and then there should be a lesson learned. What are we doing to ensure that this does not happen in the Again, future? Yeah. Well, so it's really sad. We'll see how it goes. And there's also reports, uh, really sad reports, that the owner of the building itself, you know, was, you know, um, there when it happened. And, you know, might very likely one of the people who is trapped or who, of course, they are going to be trying to rescue if he still makes it out um, alive. Um, which is, you know, another really, 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 really sad aspect. Really sad. Um, because of all the days for the building to collapse. It has to be a day when he himself went there for inspection. So hopefully there will be answers um, and we'll get to figure out whose fault it really was. Um, whose lapses, you know, led to the collapse of that building, whose structural, you know, deficiencies led to the collapse of that building, whose stubborn head maybe led to the collapse of that building. Um, I, I looked further to say that it was something that was being priced for as much as $1.2 million for an apartment and uh, $5 million for the penthouse. Mm. Um, did did you also see the v video that surfaced yesterday? Yeah, I did. Uh, where, um, I don't know if that's the owner actually saying, oh, oh, this is the best place oh, yeah, to be, that, yeah. uh, best contractors, that, because the contractors anyway. were actually foreigners and they're the best in the world and this is what we're getting. But I'm hoping that, like you have mentioned, you know, yeah. um, people will be held accountable for this particular action. Absolutely, and rest in peace to those lives who have been lost. Uh, we hope that the rescue efforts continue and they, they're able to save actually save more lives that are trapped under that rubble. Uh, would uh, continue to report. Our reporters will continue to, of course, bring you feedback from uh, ECOE, the uh, part of Lagos, to let you know exactly what is going on on Gerard Street. Stay with us. All right, our next uh, top trending story is moving to, well, Anambra State, where a popular billionaire businessman, Obi Kubana, as is popularly called, has, uh, according to reports, been questioned, uh, not necessarily arrested, but is being questioned by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission for money laundering charges and whatnot. Um, um, for, for a lot of people who have responded to this, um, it says really that, well, you know, this was meant to happen at some point. Mm. Um, those, I'm just sharing some of the reactions that I've seen. You know, there's people who said, well, this, this was going to happen at some point. Why? Because Mostly of the party? Because, yeah, because of the, the show of, you know, wealth and affluence, you know. And, of course, in Nigeria, you really don't stay hidden for so long. You know, at some point, <laughs> there's going to be somebody who would say, you know, it's either, you know, out of jealousy or maybe there's actually questions that needed to be asked. Um, and all that, you know, expression of wealth and affluence here and there, um, really just put himself or put him, you know, in the, in, in the, you know, in, in, in the limelight and everybody, including the EFCC is going to start wondering which business you've been doing for so long and this many years 
that you know is giving you all this money. There's also the arguments, and I, I'm, 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 to be honest, I'm really just sharing the views from other people that I've seen. There's also those who have said that it, it's not necessarily him, you know, being a gazillionaire in billions richer than Be Jeff Bezos. Is you know all the wealth that was shown, you know, in his mother's burial was really just you know people coming to appreciate him because of the number of years that he's assisted them and he has been there for them or whatnot. Mm. But anyway, uh, the news is that the EFCC has, you know, of course, invited Ob Kubana, as is popularly called, for questioning over alleged money laundering. But there's really nothing wrong if you're invited for questioning. As a matter of fact, no, uh, I think he actually put himself out. Not necessarily that he knew this was going to happen, but of course it's questioning. So um, because also if you want to also look at the issue of money laundering, uh, it, this uh, Money Laundering Prohibition Act, which makes that illegal. So uh, it's an illegal crime. If it's been found guilty, I'm sure that the law would take its cause. But it's questioning. Even though some quarters are saying, oh, he was arrested, he was arrested. That's, it's okay. We've seen... Um, it's, this is not the first time an individual Absolutely. is invited for questioning by the EFCC. We've seen, you know, governors, former governors. We've seen wives of governors and what have you. The list is endless, Absolutely. including yourself could be invited someday. I hope, I, I, I hope I'm rich. <laughs> you, you hope you're rich enough. Maybe yeah, someday you'll just put out some stunts and yeah. then... I hope I'm rich enough to be to be investigated, you know, and then they find out that my money, my money is like. Don't, don't you know that? Don't, don't you know that people are now bragging? They're like, have you been invited by EFCC? It's very bragging, right? So I hope I'm rich enough. All right, EFCC, please invite me. All right, um, but I also mentioned, you know, that there's people who've also said that this could also be related to the Anambra elections. Oh no! Um, can we just even take a break? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how really how can? Be, I mean, because, How can of, things you know, be? because of sponsorship, you know, so people, this is, I'm really, I'm just sharing what no, I'm No, no, I totally sponsors. understand because I so, also saw some of those reactions. Yeah, you know, that, you know, well, let's find out who we very likely will be sponsoring for the Anambra elections. So supporting, <laughs> not necessarily sponsoring, but supporting the Anambra elections. That, you know, all this might just be. But, but you know, my, my major concern is, you know, for every time we have something happen in Nigeria, we always seem to, I'm not saying that, you know, there could be some element of truth, but mm -hmm. as long as we're not able to verify all of that, I mean, it just leaves it at ESA and all of that and hearsay cannot be taken at this point that these are just speculation but Absolutely. i'm just wondering why we try to you know politicize every little thing that happens i mean i never thought about that who could even be thinking it's a about trauma it? response <laughs> it's a trauma response from what we've seen as nigerians mm -hmm. from experiences that we've had in the past mm -hmm. that's really what it is nobody nobody just these theories don't come out of the gutter and and then some people are also saying oh yes he is also from the south is this also could just be you know another witch hunt and all of that and what have you but really, like I, I mentioned tell. earlier on, I, I think that's nothing really wrong if you're, anyone could be questioned, anyone could be invited, I mean, to ask, how are you making your money? We suspect X, Y, Z. And yeah. oh, he's innocent until being proven guilty yeah. by a court of competent Time jurisdiction. Time yeah. will tell, absolutely. The final thing, I think we can just quickly rush through this, uh, a guy called Adam Zuju, who has also been declared wanted, this time by Interpol for uh, fraud. Um, after setting up an investment company, this this is this this happens every two weeks or every four market days. If we're being honest <laughs> with ourselves, um, set up an investment company called Adi Finance and Investment Limited, and um, of course, allegedly has run away with billions of uh, people of invest investors uh, funds. Um, the crime or the people who eventually you know have gotten him invited by the Interpol uh, claim that he you know defrauded them of fifty two million naira and twenty eight thousand dollars. But this, I believe, or from what the story is saying, is really just a tip of the iceberg. Or it's just really, you know, a little pinch out of uh, the amount of money that he's alleged to have uh, run away, away with. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain investment companies in the country today that I believe that if you're not, I mean, I can't, I can't name them. But if, you're, if, that, if those are not the ones that you're using, you basically are playing with your money. Because some of all these extras, you know, by these random Nigerians that nobody knows where they came from, the Adams Ujus and the Glorious Aes and the guys that we spoke about mm. uh, two weeks ago that are in Panama or some random country now. Have they been found um, there? Yeah, apparently they're, they're in some random country trying to be citizens and never come back to Nigeria. Oh, wow. Um, if, if you keep put your money in any of those places owned by these random people that are members of your church, Oh, what are you saying? <laughs> 
Okay, but, but this is what I have to say. I mean, whether they are members of your church or not, it's important that you okay. seek, uh, you know, some a sort of financial education. I would always say that. It's okay to say, I want to invest my money. But before you invest your money, please do your due diligence. You, uh, you, you need to investigate. You need to find <coughs> out. And, and, you know, because we're not... You know, we're not in that society where you would want to say, okay, I, I need to pay a consultant. Because at some point, you need to just consult. And there's someone you need to just pay a fee to just give you all of that, um, you know, advice and all of that. So you don't become a victim of all of this uh, fraudulent element out there. I don't think any, everybody can afford a consultant. And at the same time, I think there's people who actually do ask questions before they put money in these same fraudulent schemes. It doesn't seem fraudulent at first. I'm just saying, don't trust anybody with glasses and a, and a bow tie that attends your church. Well, you have one. <laughs> uh, or oh, neck. Sorry. Stay with us. We'll take a short break when we come back. Um, off the press, it begins and we get to look at the major stories, making headlines across Nigeria today. We'll be back. <laughs>